When we look at corn rules, we find lots of evidence that the corn rules have once been molten. For example, corn rules consist of olivine pyroxene as larger porphyry grains sitting in what we call a mesostasis of glassy or fine crystalline or calcium aluminum rich material. Now glassy means this was once molten, otherwise it wouldn't be glass. Then the chondrule, the, the olivine in the chondrules, for example, contain inclusions of also glass that has a similar composition as the mesostasis, which means this material that is enclosed in the olivine must have been there before the olivine formed. This means the olivine must have formed from the melt, must also have been molten and crystallized then around basically this bit of melt. So if the entire chondrule was once molten, we can um, assigned a certain temperature to this chondrule forming event. And this is above the liquidus of the chondrule. So we can draw a temperature um, y-axis, for example, in Kelvin, and then a range of liquidus temperatures that chondrules have, because they have different compositions between something may be 700 and 2000 Kelvin. So the chondrule must at some point have been here. And as I said, the mesostasis is glassy. Now, glassy indicates that there was a quick cooling. Further, chondrules also contain comparatively large amounts of sodium, which is a volatile element, which would completely evaporate at high temperatures, which it didn't, which means the chondrule most likely quickly cooled down. Now, this one chondrule was not alone. There were many chondrules forming at the same time. And these chondrules heated each other, which means they kept each other a little warm, and cooling was a little bit slower. So we can make an x-axis here as well, uh, which is the time t in, for example, hours. Then we need a heating path here. Now it seems rather unlikely that chondrules were kept at high temperatures for a long time, so that chondrules sort of arrived here this way. It is unlikely because we need then a reservoir of volume in which the corn rules are stored at these high temperatures and then are suddenly removed without any temperature gradient. So here's hot, there's cold, and we get the corn rules out. And this is quite an unlikely scenario, which means corn rules most likely were not kept hot in the reservoir, but were also quickly heated from a certain ambient temperature. So which means the heating path is something like this here. And then we have an entire temperature path for the chondrule formation. And then we can um, look how we can explain this kind of temperature path, which is again shown here. So here's the, this temperature path again, um, which has also been reproduced experimentally from just thinking about a chondrule, as I just said, and this reproducing experimentally is this orange line here, and um, this fits quite well with what we observe in the chondrules themselves. Then, in addition to these experimental constraints, or, well, following these experimental constraints, it has been attempted to find mechanisms explaining this chondral formation. And there are currently three, four main mechanisms that are suggested. One is the, the first one is the shock wave, should be the shock wave model, and the X-Vent model and the lightning model. And also in recent times, there is the collision of planetesimals, which is on and off popular at the moment is among some, again, quite popular. And these three models are also included here. So this one here is the, um, so starting with the shockwave model, shockwave model goes up here and down there again. Then the x wind model starting at higher ambient temperatures going not that high and then slowly back and then the uh, nebular lighting model is actually going really very fast up and back down again and then it stays down here. So these are the various predictions from these models. And then we can compare, of course, these curves with what we have been observed, because these are only models and um, they are not, they can't prove anything, anything they can, can just show us what is most likely. And um, at the moment, the shockwave model seems to reproduce what we observe and know from experiments best. 
and this is one of the reasons why this is most popular. But as said, one needs also be always be cautious with models. Um, this is very standard at the moment. Shockwave is quite um, popular. As said, collisions of Astro is also quite popular. There's, there's no constraint. Um, certain path here to compare it with would be interesting. But most important, quantum brief high temperature events we know this from observation and experiments, and we can reproduce this with some models, most likely shockwave models.